<laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yes, I'm British. I, you know, lived in London for 14 years of my life. And there were some similarities and there were some differences. I went to an all black, well, all girls school in London and it was majority black. And I've lived in America for eight years. And I've, you know, obviously conversated with a lot of women. So I, I know the comparison. Um, I would say African-American women can be a little bit more jealous than the black British female. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Sublime. So, on the second point that you made about what women need to do, you hit the nail right on the head. There, there are a lot of men who complain about those things. Um, and they complain, for instance, that a lot of black women make their femininity conditional. So they're only going to be soft and all the things that you talked about after this list of demands are met. But our masculinity has to be right off top. Like right off top, I want you opening doors and I want you paying for meals and things like that. A lot of men are saying that doesn't make sense. So the question that I have is, and I want you to answer this for yourself and maybe include a story or a conversation you've had with your girlfriends. Do y'all want a partner or a leader? Both. That's why I want. Talk to me. What, what does that look like? I want a man I can go to advice, go to for advice. And if I need help, he's there to back me up. I want a man who's, you know, who just does some boss ass shit. And I'm just like, ooh, that's what I want. A leader, like, I don't want a man that's just, you know, blown in the wind. You know what I'm saying? I want somebody who knows he's going straight, he's going left, he's going right. Because I don't. I need somebody to lead me. I don't want to be with somebody, you know, who's just like me. I want somebody to provide me some direction. And I want somebody to back me up. And that's where partner comes in. I'm gonna push back a little bit. <laughs> because when, 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 I, when I visualize a partner, right? I visualize somebody who's beside me. When I visualize a leader, I visualize somebody who's in front of me. How can we be both? <laughs> you can be both. Explain. It's, you don't have to be like literal, like, you know. Men tend to be literal, so you gotta break it down. You gotta break it down for us. <laughs> I'm seeing like, okay, you want me here or you want me here? Like, am I driving or am I in the passenger seat? Like, what are we talking about? <laughs> I mean, like, I feel like you can know. Like, there's men that, you know, are doing like, I'm being leaders, but. They're still your partner. Like, I don't know. Because you can confide in them. That's your partner. And you can also ask for advice or direction. So you need somebody who's well-rounded. You need somebody who's well-rounded. And that's the thing. Well-rounded men are scarce. Can you, can you confide in a leader? A good leader. You could. And if you can't confide in him, then you don't He's need him. He's not a good leader. Okay, so how are we both? I can confide in a leader. 
right? But a partner can't lead me because we're, we're equals. Wait, say that again? I can confide in a good leader, right? Because they're in front of me and sometimes they might come back to talk to me and give me direction. But a partner can't lead me. But we're saying that somebody can be both. How? A partner can't lead me. Or do you think a partner can lead? Or do you think a leader Sometimes, leads? yeah, you bounce ideas off of each other. Off each other. So if you like, you know, it's not necessarily leading, but it's working together to go forward. You know, I don't know, but I don't know. Let me ask you this way. If, if, if you had two, two men in front of you, right? Man A is a leader. Just straight up and down, he's a leader. Man B is the best partner you can ever pray for. Which man are you going to? And why? <laughs> That's hard. That's a hard question. We ask hard questions here. <laughs> Because I'm just picturing leader in somebody. I mean, I would want somebody who works beside me so we can grow together. So partner. That's what I would want. Because leader, you know, might be a good leader and everything. But at the same time, you have this person who is, you know, showing you that they're devoted to working with, working with you you would get there further. And you'd have that history. I don't know. But then a leader, it's like, you could go to them and ask for direction and do it on your own. <laughs> so. Not necessarily. I, I, think, I think they would still help you. A good leader would still, because I, me personally, I believe in servant leadership. Okay. So that means instead of me standing on the top of a mountain and telling people to come up, I go down and help push them up. Okay. Right. So that's the type of leadership I believe in whether in the family or whether in, um, you know, in your community, in your, in your country, state, whatever. Now, the, the problem tends to be, I think some women aren't being honest. Aren't being honest? Honest about what? About what they actually want. Mm. Because... Um, for instance, one of the big conversations right now is 50-50, right? Like, uh, should the man pay all the bills or should we split it 50-50? What do you think the leader would say to that? And what do you think the partner would say to that? I think the leader would say, I got you, babe. What do you think the partner would say? Put it some way. N not necessarily 50-50. But they would want you to do more than just, you know, chill. Oh, so what do you want? Huh? What do you want? Do you want the I got you, babe? Or do you want the some split? I want the I got you, babe. That's it. <laughs> so you That's want it. a leader? <laughs> I want that. <laughs> You're right. Mm -hmm. But okay. I do want that. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I do want <laughs> I do want that. Like, you know, you do, you do. And I'm going to sit here and flex like you do. Why do you think that's so hard for women to admit sometimes? It's not necessarily hard. I mean, for people that don't say it, they're lying. Because everybody, <laughs> everybody would want somebody to pay their bills. That's plain. That's simple. But sometimes when you do have a man that pays the bills... It comes with consequences. He's controlling, wants you to be here at this time, wants you to pick up every time he calls. You know, there's terms and conditions to his money. So, just go. Somebody um, in the comments the other day said, and I want you to react to this. They said, most women want the authority of men the privileges of women and the accountability of children. 
Mm. What are your thoughts? Mm. And I'm gonna lie, I'm guilty. I fit into those categories. I really do. <laughs> tell, tell me, tell me why. Like what? Because I want, I want a. Let's say my seventeen-year-old brother is watching this, right? Mm-hmm. I want him to gain a better understanding of like. Because I feel like there is something there to learn from. There is. You just got to be like, just got to find your one and work through it. You know, everyone's different. You just got to find the one you can, you know, you're not going, everything's not going to be perfect. You want to have something that's wrong with the person and you have to love them enough to, you know, be willing to work on it. If they, have ang- if they have anger issues, recommend therapy. Shoot, go with them. Do something because you love them. And you want it to work. And then when you n- notice you just keep trying and keep trying, it doesn't work, then that's just not the person. There's no way to say, you know, all black girls are like this, all black girls are like that. Because everyone's different. You just got to find the one that you can 95% tolerate. And work through the 5% together. Because that's what love is. Working together to get to the main goal of coexisting. So I think you might have an interesting, an interesting take on this. Um, because you are British and... You live in the United States, but you're also Jamaican, right? So like you're, you're like a foreign person who's here, right? <laughs> so one of, one of the members, um, his name is S. Webb, shout out to him. Um, he asked, he said, do you think black men have better options overseas? Because what's happening right now, like there's a, another better YouTube options. channel. Mm -hmm. There's another YouTube channel. uh, It's called Zoom to Thailand. And he actually, he was, I think he was a Hollywood producer. And he went to Thailand recently, like moved to Thailand. He's got a girlfriend and the whole night. And he's talking about how Thai women and foreign women in general are a lot more feminine, a lot more submissive, a lot more tolerable, kind of like you put it. Um, And a lot of men are actually talking about getting their passports because they're tired of dealing with certain aspects of black women in the States. So do you think black men actually have better options overseas or do you think they're tripping? Pun intended. Better options. Whew. Um, that's a question that I don't know. I feel like if you want a Thailand woman, get a Thailand woman. But they're going to have their issues too. You just are more tolerable of Thailand women issues. And that's okay, but, you know, everyone has something wrong with them. Everyone. They could be all feminine now, but they're nasty. Disgusting. <laughs> like you they stink. They don't like to shower. You know what I'm saying? You know, this girl might have a bad tone, but this girl, you know, she doesn't use deodorant. So it's just like everyone is gonna have an issue. You just gotta pick what's for you and work with it, you know? Because every you know, different cultures do different things. Mm. So right now, statistically, um, I think they say 27 percent, only 27 percent of black American women are going to get married. What? Yeah. That's crazy. Only 27 percent. Why is that? Well, it's it's because of a lot of the reasons that uh, black men talk about. And I, I think your point is very interesting because I think black men are saying I'm more willing to deal with a woman who stinks versus a woman with a stinky attitude. Mm. 
And black women tend to have a stinky attitude. So even though the Thai woman has her own issues, those issues are more tolerable or I'm more willing to interact with those than these issues. So like, what do you have to say to that? And like, what's been your experience? I guess we gotta fix our attitudes. But what's been your experience kind of, you know, with black British women versus black American women? Do you see any consistencies or like, (laughs) we're all kind of the same? Okay. (laughs) Tell the truth, something's there. (laughs) Tell the truth. (laughs) This is not the question you're asking me. (laughs) <laughs> Tell the truth. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm British. I, you know, lived in London for 14 years of my life. And there are some similarities and there are some differences. I went to an all black, well, all girls school in London and it was majority black and I've lived in America for eight years and I've, you know, obviously conversated with a lot of women. So I, I know the comparison. Um, I would say African-American women can be a little bit more jealous than the black British female. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say. You know. I'm not gonna cap. Like, yeah, I've been through that. Um, and it's more so somebody else's fault, other than you know looking for reasons why. No reasons like how they could do it. So I don't know. I don't know. How, I don't know, it's definitely tough because since I've been here, I haven't been able to really like fully understand how to have a good relationship with females. But when I was back in London, I have a bunch of black black friends. But for me here, it was hard adjusting because of the jealousy I experienced in high school, the bullying, you know, because I was from London and, you know, the stereotypes, chip to cheerio, all that kind of stuff, you know? So it was just like, there was a lot of jealousy there because I would get the attention. And that's the first thing that I realized. But, and I also feel like, you know, black British girls, they're more, um, we're fashionable, we put our, we put our own spin on stuff. We don't follow trends that much. Like we just do that as a difference in the African American girls. Um, I would say I feel like we're more ourselves. We just we just do us. It's not so clickish because I feel like that's the thing with um, girls nowadays. Is everyone wants to be a part of the clique for the pictures and, uh, you know, the vacations. It's not so individualistic, but I feel like we still have that back in London, that individualism that, you know, if I want to mix colors in my outfit today, I'm going to do it. But whereas if you're a black girl in America, usually, or from South Carolina, just because that's what I can speak on, because that's where I've been, is not so prevalent because everyone follows trends. But I think that's the thing, like in bigger cities like New York and London and France, there's a lot of individualism. And that's why fashion is so big in those areas because of the individualism. But in the small countries, there's not a lot of it. Why, why do you think, like in your experience, even from high school, like, cause you know, I'm also, you know, an immigrant. So I had my experiences too, but <clears throat> what do you think is the context? Why do you think they 
behaving that way? Because they don't know. They wasn't exposed to... I mean, they might have seen it on TV, but it's not like something they see on a daily basis, a black girl from London. You know, they, when they watch TV, they see a certain stereotype about London, Africa, the whole continent. So when you say that, they already have their thoughts about it because that's what they were shown on TV. So they act that way towards you because you're different and they don't know. So talk, talk to me about some of the things you admire about Black American women. I admire the strength. The strength because like people, as soon as you, they hear your name or see you, like n now on like the corporate world, people just judge you right out the gate. So you really gotta work five times as hard as the Caucasian woman in the cubicle next to you, you know? So I do admire the strength that we have to go through to make something of ourselves or themselves. So, cause I see it like I work in an office. I'm the only black woman, but the majority of the people that live there are black. So <laughs> they just, one of the buildings just told me that they love me because the other um, lady that, um, the other black lady, she wasn't even black, she was mixed, but she would act more in a Caucasian way and I'm just a black lady amongst these white people that still acts, you know, like a black woman. So they have that to relate to and I always, you know, make them feel like even though they might not be able to pay their rent or stuff like that, I always make them feel like someone's hearing them or I help their issues out or, yeah, so. I don't so, even know where I went. Hmm? I don't even know where I went with that. I'm just. No, no, that, that made sense. No, I, I appreciate the way that you're <laughs> answering these questions because you're really hitting on some, some solid points. So this is another one that I think you are going to like kill, right? There's a movement um, online right now. It's called divest. Hashtag divest. Hashtag swirl life. Hashtag pink pill. Pink pill? Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> pink. So, and the movement is centered around black women who are tired of black men mm. and are going to white men or Asian men or Hispanic, Hispanic men. men. Right. But it's not just saying, I'm going to date multiple types of men. A, a lot of times they say the best man for the job. But more often than not, they think black men are the worst man for the job. Just off top. They call us dusty. <laughs> they call us irresponsible. The whole nine. So have you heard of it, about this before? What are your thoughts? After me explaining that to you, what are your thoughts? <laughs> it's just a movement about not liking black men. I don't see the. <laughs> do, do, do you think do you think it's a good thing or bad thing? Do you understand where they're coming from? What do you think it's going to lead to? Like what what are you, what are your honest thoughts? My honest thoughts are. I don't even know. I feel like. Sometimes maybe it is nice to go outside your race. Try something new. If it's not working for you, try something new. But all black men aren't the same. You know, we do, we do have to search through a big bucket to get to that one. But they're not all the same. Um, I feel like... 
I feel like a lot of men do have the same issues, though. So maybe the lack of um, tension in the, like, after the puppy, puppy love phase or whatever they call it. Most men have, not most men, but a lot of men have the issue. So you're going to have to go through the same thing. Same thing again in the next relationship, unless he's one in a dozen. But if you, if you really want to just, you know, try out style your race, I say go for it. Shoot. I have. I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to sit here and cap. I've been with the Hispanic man. And you know, it wasn't bad. So you never know. Try it. And so I don't know. If you want to get married next week, they'll probably do it. So go ahead. <laughs> so that's, so that's, why, that's how I feel. Like, do you? <laughs> do, do you think um, the reasons why black women step outside of their race is the same as the reasons black men step outside their race? Or do you think it's different? No, I think it's different. Black, I think black men sometimes step outside their race because of the image they want. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when like guys going to, guys get money, a lot of them do step outside the race. Women step outside the race usually because they just don't relate with um, the average black man in today's society just get tired of it or just don't want to do it or just are attracted to him. So that's why I think the difference is. Um, yeah. For, for some of the men that, you know, I know of, I've come across, for instance, who get white women, they say some of those same things. Hmm? They say that they can't relate to black women. They say that they are not attracted to black women. So it seems like it's the same reason. Same things. It could be vice versa. The black woman might meet a white man that's, you know, rich and she wants to come up. She gets with him it's for the image, for, you know, the boost forward she gets for being with him. So it's vice versa. Mm -hmm. 